A couple of months ago, I finished building a power plant at my house. Seriously. And since then, my power hasn't went out once and I was able to reduce my electricity bill by 93%, even though I'm using more energy now than before. Let me explain how I pulled this off and also thanks to Franklin WH for sponsoring this video. Now let's dive in. When it comes to living a bulletproof life, the second pillar, the second most important thing is your home, meaning you need to secure it in a way that protects your family no matter what kind of storm comes your way in this case, literal storms. Now, one of the biggest things you can do is secure your energy independence from the grid. And you can do this by building your own power plant, then switching everything else you have to run off your own energy that you create. Pretty simple, right? Now, not only does this protect your family, it also saves you money. Here's how. When it comes to making your own energy, there isn't a better way to do it than solar panels. Depending on where you live, you may be able to do wind, but it's really not a great solution, not a cost-effective one at the residential scale yet. It's better at these big giant ones that you see out in the middle of nowhere. Now, solar panels are cheap and they're easy to install. So if you're so inclined, you can actually do it yourself. There are even websites and companies out there that will help you with kind of designing the package and permit applications and everything you need to get going. Now, I am not so inclined. Uh, I am fairly handy. I have no problem fixing things or installing new lights or whatever, but installing solar, especially on the roof that we have at my house was not one that I was ready to really tackle yet. So with that, I went to Energy Sage, which is a great place to find an installer without having them spam you or call you or anything like that you can kind of compare quotes before you actually even make a decision to talk to somebody so that's what i recommend if you want to find someone but also there are other companies out there like i said that offer these diy systems so i'll put some links to those down in the description if you want once you've got solar you've got part one you make your own energy but of course the sun doesn't shine at night unless you're in space, uh, but that this isn't the Our Ludicrous Future podcast, so we'll leave that alone. The sun doesn't shine at night, so in addition to solar panels, you need a way to store the energy that you create so you can use it when there's no solar power. Now, right now, this is where all the innovation is happening. It seems every day there are new companies popping up with different types of energy storage solutions, from your typical lithium ion batteries to redox flow batteries. Even I saw a flywheel battery out there, which is really cool if it works. So, you know, more to come on that. And I'm kind of using battery loosely here. It's a way to store the energy, even if it's not, you know, something you would have in your phone or your car or whatever. Now for my house, I went with the Franklin WH batteries and I'll tell you why in a second. But first, let's have a quick tour of my system at my house so you can see kind of what I'm working with. Okay, so here are my actual batteries that have been in my house for several months now. We took a while to make this video because there was a couple software updates that I felt just had to be done before I was comfortable sharing with it. And this speaks to the responsiveness of Franklin. They were able to take my feedback, implement these changes, so that way you can have a better experience. So I've been able to use these for a while now and we have lots of data that we're gonna go through, but basically they are just two big boxes in my garage. They're a bit thicker than say a Tesla Powerwall because of the style of battery is what I understand, the LFP versus the lithium ion. And so other than that, they're basically just two white boxes you kind of fit anywhere. They can't go outside. For me with the ground out there, it didn't really make a lot of sense. It was uneven, it's not stable. So we put them inside here and they really haven't caused any problems. We, you know, kind of fit stuff all around them. Didn't really lose much storage or anything like that. So, so far in terms of their performance here, there's zero noise. There's really nothing that happens other than this little light goes up and down as you use energy. So in the morning when I come out and do my workouts, usually it's pretty low because I have a reserve. But other than that, you really don't notice anything other than you know they're sitting in your garage if I open up the app you can see that we're pulling some energy from it there's a little bit of solar energy left but mostly it's coming from the batteries right now and that is just a typical kind of day of how it goes you can see here essentially what's happening is the grid energy is being consumed in that super off peak time solar energy comes up the green is the battery it gets charged up everything from the solar energy starts to go back to the grid and give us a little bit of that credit and then at that peak hour we see that the battery kicks on and it essentially eats it from there so that's a typical day using those settings i'm using the time of use setting and i have a five percent reserve for outages there's also the storm hedge thing we don't do that but I can go in here and I can say edit the schedule. So this is kind of how the schedule is set up. We have our super off peak, our off peak, our on peak, etc. But 
this is, you know, we have weekdays and then weekends are a little bit different. There's also summer rates and then there's, so you can set up certain months, different things. Right now I just had it set up as, you know, all the same. Uh, it does change for us here. So it's pretty sophisticated, pretty advanced, but this is how you want to do it if you want to maximize the value from these batteries. Besides just having them as say, you know, a, a backup plan in case you have an outage. This is the way to really kind of get the most bang for your buck. Really, really good app. I really think that, you know, the improvements they made in the past few months working with them have been tremendous and I highly recommend it. So my house has two full-size batteries here. They come out to about 27 kilowatt hours of energy and that will give me about 30 hours of off-grid time if I needed to kind of still use everything. Obviously, if we we're in a real situation where we needed to, we would conserve energy and we could stretch that out. But also within 30 hours, especially where I live in Southern California, the sun is also likely to come up. So I have 28 solar panels now, I'm adding 14 more, and that is more than I typically use in a day with the exception of charging my vehicles. Again, if we were in a true long-term off-grid solution, we probably wouldn't be doing that nearly as much. So we make more energy than we consume and we can store enough energy to get us through until the sun comes up again. But at the end of the day, across a long enough time frame, you're gonna run out of that battery, that, that stored energy, and just kind of not be able to charge again. So that's where you really need to watch it if you ever were in a long-term off-grid solution or if you were building an entirely off-grid property. We also have an A-gate here, which are the brains of the operation, and they kind of configure everything and allow me to use the app to decide what's happening. And in there, there are even these smart switches where you can have things connected, and then if, the grid is down and the batteries are low, you can just switch them off easily so that way you don't have to disconnect or rewire anything. This is called smart load shedding and you can completely manage these circuits from the Franklin WH app. And then I already have a sub panel where everything is wired that is only 100 amps. And then in my main panel, there's basically nothing there except for my EV charger because it's just such a beast in terms of how much energy it pulls. We put that one separately. So the whole house runs off the sub panel. The Everything is connected to the A gate and then the batteries power it. The solar panels refill the batteries and we have essentially a fully functioning power plant at my house. And like I said, I currently have 28 panels giving me about eight kilowatts of peak energy out of that PV system. And we're gonna be adding 14 more panels to the pool area where it won't get the optimal amount of sun, but you know, with the aesthetics of the house and everything, it still adds quite a bit giving us an additional five kilowatts, meaning that we're coming up with about 13 kilowatt of peak PV power. That should be enough to completely refill the batteries and then some, so that way we can essentially go off grid forever if we needed to. Now these batteries are special. They're lithium iron phosphate, which is different than the typical lithium ion batteries. And the cool thing about that is that they last so much longer and they have really good thermal stability, meaning they don't get really hot. The risk of a fire or anything is extremely low. And so with that, I think it's a better solution than other lithium ion options out there for home batteries. And also because of that, they don't lose their capacity, meaning you can charge them almost all the way down to zero up to 100% again and again and again. And the cycle life is just way, way longer, which is why they're able to offer a 12 year warranty, which includes battery performance degradation down to 70%. That means that up till 12 years, if you go to fully charge this thing and it only gives you 70% or less, they will replace it for free. It's still under warranty. Now that is tremendous because that right there is how you're able to make up all the cost associated with installing the system. And that difference there, that long warranty, the cycle life, the reusability, the thermal stability, that is what actually made me choose Franklin before we even ever decided to partner on anything. In fact, that's how a lot of sponsors on the channel happen is I do the research, I find the thing that I think would be best, and then we reach out to the company. And that's what happened here. So with Franklin, it's one of those where it's a great solution that I was choosing, and then they happen to be interested in partnering with me. So you can be sure that what I'm telling you here is legit, as well as the data I'm about to share about how I've actually been saving money. Over the past 12 months, and prior to that we owned the house, but I was just using it as a studio, so the electricity usage isn't really relevant, right? It was a, I was there one person uh, a few times a week, whatever. So now we're there full time. We've been in there for almost 12 months. The first bill I got after we were there for a full month was $826. Crazy, right? Now I did figure out that I didn't have the right EV time of use plan. 
I knew that I needed to do that, but I wasn't sure. And so then after I did that, that dropped it from that $826 in a couple months down to $320 uh, and then $370. So, you know, about half. And then since then, adding the battery, my usage is actually going up as the summer months are here. We're using air conditioning a lot and those kind of things, as well as charging fully two vehicles there. My most recent bill, was $59. Now that doesn't include some non-bypassable charges, et cetera, et cetera, but I went from $826 to $59. I mean, that is a tremendous drop, right? Now the thing about that that's even more interesting is that not only is this a 2,400 square foot home, all one level, with air conditioning running, my wife is there full time working from home. We've got two kids, a dog, you know, all the typical American family type stuff but that also includes fuel for two vehicles. One being uh, the world's fastest truck ever made and the other one being the most popular EV in America, the Tesla Model Y. So I drive the Rivian R1T full time and my wife has a Tesla Model Y. So imagine if you wanted to think about this for your own situation, you're gonna spend a lot of money in doing this, right? Building your power plant, it protects your family bulletproof life, but it also helps you save money. And the saving money thing is the really interesting part to me because it may not make total sense. But if you were to look at your electric bill now, plus how much you spend on gas or electricity, if you have an electric car for your vehicles. So that all combined for a lot of people is well over a thousand dollars a month. Some of my friends back in Phoenix are complaining about six, $700 a month because they have air conditioning units that are just running 24 seven. Think about that you spend a ton of money on this stuff most likely. And here I am not really caring too much about how often we run things or this or that. And I'm paying about $2 a day for the energy I'm using. And that includes fuel for my vehicles. I mean, this is to me the most exciting revelation is that, you know, and why I'm even doing this is because I'm spending all this money doing all this on my own to try to show you how you can live this way, how you can have this bulletproof life where you're protected against outages. Every day I seem to see a, a new headline like that and save money at the same time. That's why they don't have to be mutually exclusive, right? Sometimes in this world of renewable energy and stuff, people tend to think that this is some big tree hugger thing. We're all vegans and this and that. And none of us lift weights and whatever, whatever, right? That's not what it's about for me. Uh, there are some benefits there, but for me, it's about energy independence. It's, it's about freedom. It's about taking control of what I can actually control. And your home energy being independent and saving money here is just has to be the biggest thing outside of your health, which of course we'll talk about in some future videos. So if you want to see more about what I'm doing to get my home kind of off grid and run everything, I still have some gas appliances, for example, check out this home tour I did because it includes information about a federal program that you can actually take advantage of to gain rebates and credits and save money by doing these things. So you can take advantage of it for yourself. So that's it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see you back here next time.